which is the engine of growth in most countries. I was in Hanoi early this year and I was amazed when I was the chief economist for East Asia, the exports of, Hanoi, of Vietnam were lower than Pakistan. And now Hanoi has $48 billion of exports and we are struggling with $20 billion of exports. 160 million people and it is not on that we can continue and feel happy with $20 billion of exports. So we have to pay a lot of attention to export of goods and services. And I gave this talk at BMA Abraj ceremony. I said, Pakistan has a comparative advantage in financial services. We should try to export financial services. That is something we can do. We cannot make, get a lot of orders for the outsourcing in IT, but at least in this area we can do that. Fourth is the mindset and the attitude of our private sector. Our private sector is still living in a world where rent-seeking connections, approaches, privileges, association with the government in power would bring them short-term gains. But that is not a game which is going to be played in a world where there are many countries coming up and threatening your comparative advantage. The name of the game is productivity, efficiency, and stable relations between the labor and the management. And investing in the labor through training, through motivation, through incentives, so that they can do the best. Unless we change this attitude, we don't keep two books, one for the tax, one for ourselves. We don't de depress our balance sheets deliberately. You will be in this kind of trouble all the time, seeking concessions from the government. And that is not the way forward to compete. The fifth and the most important is that we have not invested. We have done a lot of lip service in our human resources. As the world becomes more and more knowledge-based economy, there is no way out for you but to produce professionals, and not only academically professionals, but professionals in the overall sense of integrity, dedication, and commitment who are mobile, not only in Pakistan, but all across the world. And that, I think, is a challenge we all have to meet. I have given you what I consider is not a recipe for being so down on your country, but a recipe which can get this country out of the present turbulence and financial crisis, but set it on a path which is sustainable and which is full of promise for the people of Pakistan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Saab. If we could request you to, uh, to please, I mean, we, uh, we, we're going to do a quick round of Q&A. We could do that. Uh, Is there any questions from the audience? Chavit sir. I think the delay in what is taking place is 
going to result in the IPP shutting down. And that is likely to cause a major crisis. Uh, whatever plans you may have of growth and whatever, all our dreams are going to be shattered completely. You talked about that we are despondent and we are uh, depressed. Don't you think uh, we need to be depressed? I mean, there's nothing cheerful in the end. So what is the solution you have in mind? I think we had the same problem with the circular debt in 2004. We sat down across the table with every stakeholder who owed money to each other, and we decided that this is the way out, and we implemented it. So it's not a rocket science that you cannot sit down across the table with the refineries, with WAPTA, PAPCO, KESC, IPPs, the banks, and the Ministry of Finance, and you can find a way out. This is not something which cannot be done. No, you, you have, oh, what, what do you mean? You have the bond issues, which is a sovereign bond issues, which every government indulges, right? And we have done that so many times, okay? So it's not something which is unheard of. It has been done in the past. It has, because what you want is remove, like water is flowing through a pipe. You have choked the pipe of the payment system in the power sector. What you want to do is to clean up this pipe. That's all which is required. And it is not, I can assure you, we have done this in 2004. It can be done. So it's not as such a big problem. It is the willingness of the people to be reasonable and to accept solutions which are not always optimal solutions or the first best solutions. If you keep on insisting on the first best solutions, we will all be losers. But if you make compromises and you say this is the second best solution, but it's good for the overall system stability, we will get out of this problem. Baksab, I think uh, the conversation that has uh, flowed all day, um, a lot of people, foreign investors, local investors, th their worry is not uh, the lack of will on their part or the lack of will on the part of other market participants. It's uh, I'm sure NRL and PSO and WAPTA and uh, OGDC, they're all willing to sit together, but who's going to congregate them? Mr. Finance, that's a, and under the... That is the frustration. And I can tell you that under the agreement with the IMF, this would be one of the conditions that you have to clean up your stable. I mean, that's what IMF programs are. That's why I'm supporting the IMF program because a lot of decisions which have been postponed. I go back to what I said earlier. Some very critical decisions have been postponed which should have been taken at time. They will now be forced upon the government of Pakistan to be implemented. And that is what the beauty of the IMF program is, that somebody else is coming in. You don't do your job. Somebody else is coming and trying to say to you, you better do your job. From Iqbal sir. Sure, yeah, go ahead. Uh, next, we'll take, we'll take the next one from Iqbal sir. Yeah, I'll just uh, compliment what uh, Dr. Saab just said. Uh, yesterday, I also attended a meeting. I come from PSO uh, at the Ministry of Finance, and this is exactly what the meeting was all about, to bring all the stakeholders on the table, and we were all there, and uh, they have requested us to give them the input on exactly how these things will get adjusted.